Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to continue working on these beautiful Porsche 911 ST flares. Well, we are back in sunny Southern California and I cannot wait to start working on this car. I've been in Denver for 10 days. The weather was not that great. I didn't get to work on this. Right before I went, I welded on these pretty rare Porsche 911 ST flares that I got from TRE Motorsports. Now the ST flare is a very interesting, kind of rare flare in the Porsche world and I got all four of them tacked on. And three and a half of them turned out amazingly. So I will show you what happened to the other half a flare uh, a little later in the video. But for now, what I really wanna do is get these two rear flares fully welded on. So I'm gonna do my best to try to keep it as cool as humanly possible. Cool as the other side of the pillow, if you will. I'm also gonna pull the wheels from both sides. I wanna be able to get in there with a hammer and dolly and with my grinder and having the wheels on. By the way, 275s front and rear right now, which is pretty damn cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna pull both the wheels, jack the thing up, get it on jack stands and get rocking on this. show you guys this really quick so basically from right here all the way back I've got perfect weldable gaps I mean it's just like a little bit of a gap this I would grind off all the way down here I got a little bit of work to do here but the two surfaces are really flat right here there's a little bit of a gap which I think I can probably bring this top part up a little bit but again it is really flat now the leading edge here is a little off, although I just hammered and dollied it and it's much better than it was. So I need to, to cut this really quick to make that so there's enough of a gap that I can weld it flush. And then I'm feeling like a little bit of wave, but a lot of it is, you know, me just not grinding these welds yet. Shout out to Trev from Trev's blog on this tip of keeping the panel cool with a slightly damp rag as you go. Sort of eliminates the need to use the uh, air hose. But I am trying to make this thing cool to the touch. I'm feeling for warpage as I go. And right now it feels really good. So I find that the best way to do this for me is that I do it in thirds. So. I usually do like one side, middle, forward, or something like that. I can't just go the entire thing. There's just too much to do. But this is coming out really nice. Still no warpage, which is good. A little hotter that time. I'm on like the final stitch. Uh, on a couple of these, so I'm doing two in one spot. So I've got just a couple of holes here left. I've got a spot right there, and I've just filled a couple of the screw holes, and otherwise I think I look pretty darn clean here. Panel is very cool. I'm moving my hand underneath to see if I have any holes, which I do. Right there. Okay. All right, 
right, that feels pretty good, guys. Let's give this thing a quick little grind and see how we did. Okay, you guys have been seeing me work away at this. And here's the update. Again, really hard to tell with this, but that is invisible. That is an invisible seam there. Uh, I can keep body working this out, but you have to understand that this thing curves this way. So it's actually really hard to get into this crevice with a grinder. Like you don't want to dig it out too much. So what I may do is just hit it with a wire wheel and then I'll use the, um, you know, smoothing fiberglass filler effect here. But I am really pleased. There is literally zero warp here at all. So this thing is gonna body work really well. Here is what the inside looks like. You can see it's just lovely stitching all the way down. When I'm done with this one, I will grind all of this off so it doesn't have a color contrast and just has this beautiful flowing flare all nice and welded in. All right, so it's the next day and I am ready to now stitch up the front of this flare and the back of the flare. And I'm so happy with how this is coming out so far. You know, um, as we've all commented, you know, the, the welding has come a long way, but just the, the ability to, to look at this and not be intimidated by the amount of work it is, which is significant. You know, every flare, every flare probably takes four or five hours by the time you've measured it, you know, tacked it on, fully stitch welded it, uh, eliminated the holes, done the hammer and dolly work, that kind of thing. So you're really looking at like at least 20 hours, if not, you know, 20 to 30 hours to do it right. And I stopped by uh, Esposito Restoration yesterday in LA and um, just to see how they do it and like how the real pros do it. Like you can't even see the seam on the inside or the outside and there's no filler. Like it's really crazy how amazing it is. I am definitely not there yet. This is, will definitely require uh, at least a skim coat of that fiberglass filler. Uh, I do want to also share, these are the settings for my welder. I've got a Lincoln Electric MIG 140 or Pro MIG 140. This is something you can literally get at like Home Depot. I think I bought this one off of Craigslist for like 300 bucks. I've got an Argon CO2 tank uh, and my settings are as you see here. So nothing too fancy. Now I feel like a little bit of a V here if I feel with my fingers. So I will eventually like once I get everything all welded up, I'll probably try to work it a bit with the hammer and dolly and see how flat I can get this. I feel like I know it's flat when I can grind the welds off and they disappear. So that's when you know uh, you've kind of nailed it. I've got a little overlap on the leading edge of this where the flare is sort of sitting on top of the uh, underbody. So I'm gonna take my cutting wheel and just kind of gently try to carve out a little hole here. So there's a little bit of space to weld in. That way it'll sit very flush, which is what we want. Like right here, I have like a massive lip. I don't know what I did there. Blew it, I guess.
see that I'm using some sheet metal tools here. What these things do is bring both of these surfaces level with each other. So I do this so I can get a perfect tack wherever I can to make sure these two surfaces are as even as I can possibly make them all the way down. If I really wanted to, I could spend the next two hours making this thing completely seamless and perfect. Uh, I've been working on my techniques. I think with a little bit of hammer and dolly work, I could grind all these welds down so they were completely invisible. This is not that build. Um, it's super solid. All the welds have penetrated. It's on really straight. Uh, there's a couple of spots that I might still work on hammer and dollying, but like I'm really happy with how this thing is on. It's, it's super solid. It looks great. It's gonna take a real minimal amount of body filler before it's perfect. So I'm not worried about it. But what I am going to do is something that I've wanted to do since I first got these flares, something that is super satisfying. <laughs> Not too bad for a podcaster. So I would be silly to not be thrilled with how great these flares came out. This one in particular on the passenger side is so good and so buttery smooth that I can't believe I did it. I'm super thrilled with it and I know earlier in this video I promised that I would do all of them but honestly it's been I think three days since I started this video and I wanna just get this thing out so you guys have something to watch. I will do another one on the front. So I know I alluded to it, but I may have to redo one of my front flares. The first one, the passenger side that I put together is just like a little wonky. So the good news is, is that I can put both fenders on a table and I can compare them precisely. And this side, the driver's side looks so good. It's so perfect. So I do have a good template to measure off of. I'm hoping that I can cut the front of the passenger side flare off and just tweak it and re-weld it. So we'll see. It's only like 13 little spot welds, so I'm gonna cut it off and see if I can first just reposition and get it right. And if so, awesome. If not, then I may have to do some, some heavy lifting, but I'm feeling confident that I can do heavy lifting. Wouldn't be funny if the whole car fell off. Anyway, you guys, thanks so much for watching. This thing's coming together rad, and it's coming together quick. Uh, next couple of videos, I'm gonna have a guy out here, and we're gonna be plumbing this car, which is gonna be super thrilling. Anyway, until then, you guys be good to each other. I'll talk to you soon.